If you hold X and press the right trigger, that sets the current step to a trig value of 100 and a vol value of 50. So I'm going to press X and the right trigger, and now we have, we're back to 150. Next, let's look at the T-ball and pan parameters. T-ball is the overall volume for the entire track. This value is used in all loops. The pan value sets the stereo panning of, of a note in a track. While every track in PSP Seek is mono, the location of the mono track can be set within the stereo field. The panning can either be set for a specific step, uh, or the pan value can be set for all steps in the current loop. To control T-ball and pan, press and hold the O button. So now I'm holding the O button. And you can see the T-ball and pan are highlighted. If I move the analog pad left or right, I can adjust the pan. So now I'm moving it to the left, and the pan goes to the left. Move it to the right, and the pan goes to the right. Put it back around 50. Uh, this doesn't affect the pan value in, in other loops for this track. Uh, and in this case, I was only affecting the pan value for that particular step. If you want to affect uh, the pan value for all steps on loop, hold O and the right, and the right trigger, and then move um, the analog pad left to right. And now the pan value for all steps is synced together. Move it back to the right. Uh, to control the T-ball uh, parameter, uh, you press uh, the O button and then press the analog or digital pad up or down. So now I'm going to move it down and this adjusts the volume for all steps in all loops. So if I want to uh, make no sound play at all, I bring T-ball all the way down to zero. And this value can go all the way up to 999, so it become quite large. I'll bring it back down to 100 now. Okay. The square button is used for controlling muting of tracks in a loop. Pressing square toggles the muting of the current track. So I'm going to push the square button now. And now uh, the BAM0 track is muted and nothing is played in this track. The mute state can be seen in the square between the track name and the steps in, in the sequence. If a box is yellow, then the track is unmuted, and if it is red, it is muted. To mute all tracks, uh, but the current track, press square and the left trigger. So, square and left trigger. So now you can see that, that BAM0 is unmuted, but every other track is muted. Uh, this is often referred to as soloing a track, so it's playing by itself. To unmute all tracks, press square and the right trigger. So now press square and the right trigger, and everything is now unmuted. And, um, and this muting only affects uh, the loop that you're on. The mute values are independent for each loop. The triangle button is used to modify two synthesis parameters of the selected step. The exact parameters depend on the instrument of the track in the current selected track. In this example, we'll modify two parameters on the BAM track. A BAM is, is PSP 6 2 oscillator virtual analog style synthesizer. The two parameters that are available to directly modify from the step sequencer are freak and offset. Freak refers to the base frequency of the synthesizer, and offset controls the frequency difference between the two oscillators. So I'm going to go to a triggered step and you can see that freak and offset are in the top middle of the screen. And if I press triangle, you'll see that those two parameters are now highlighted. Uh, one way to modify the top parameter is to press the analog pad up or down. So I'm going to move the analog pad up or down, and I'm going to adjust the value in freak. So I'm going to make it a very high value. You should be able to hear the difference. Uh, you can also uh, change the, the rate of change uh, in, the, uh, in modifying the synthesis parameters by holding either the left or right trigger. 
uh, while while using the analog pad. So if I hold if I hold a uh, triangle and press the left trigger, and then the analog pad up or down, you can see that this parameter changes much more slowly. And this is going actually ten times slower than it normally does if you're not pressing the left uh, the left trigger. Now, if I press the triangle and the right trigger in the analog pad up or down, this value changes very very quickly. So I'll bring it back down to a very small value. Uh, you can also use the digital pad for uh, for fine tuning of parameters. However, the digital pad only modifies parameters if you're holding either left or right triggers. So if I hold uh, triangle and then the left trigger, then I can use the digital pad in order to adjust values a, a very small amount. Oops. So now you can see I'm adjusting this parameter by a very small amount and in, in a very small discrete steps. And if I hold uh, triangle on the right trigger, then I can make it jump by 50. Uh, to modify the bottom parameter, it's the same idea as modifying the top parameter, except instead of pressing the analog or digital pad uh, up or down, you're pressing it left to right. So now I'm going to hold triangle, and I'm going to move the analog pad to the left. And now you can see the offset value goes down. And if I move the, uh, the analog pad up, then I'm modifying freak. So I'm going to, mod I'm going to move uh, to the left again, and I'm going to bring offset down to just make it about 0.5. And then I can raise the freak value up. So now we have uh, control over both of these parameters. Uh, one other thing to keep in mind with the analog pad is that the harder you press the analog pad in one direction or another, the faster the parameter will change. If you press it a small amount in a direction, the rate of change will be slower than pushing it all the way uh, uh, in that direction. And many of the controls that use the analog pad have this sort of analog nature to them.